Hello, Bloomsbury. It's great to be here. So um, I think it's important to um, live your life by a motto. I think you, you have to choose your motto and, and then live by it. I don't think you can change. Um, there's no point in having a philosophy if you just change it halfway through your life based on some new evidence. That would be <laughs> ludicrous. Uh, I chose to live my life by the motto, my enemy's enemy is my friend. I thought that was a good motto, my enemy's enemy my friend. Unfortunately, as it turns out, my enemy is his own worst enemy. <laughs> so, uh, I have to invite him to barbecues and stuff. Um, it's, uh, it's quite annoying. I don't really like him. It's, uh, it's doubly annoying because he lives his life by the motto, keep your friends close but keep your enemies closer, so... <laughs> just helping him out there, it's an annoyance to me. So, I was chatting up a girl in a bar the other day. It wasn't going very well, I have to say. I liked her, she wasn't really interested in me. I was annoying her, if anything, but... Uh, <laughs> but I was persistent, uh, as you'll find out, ladies, if you do just hang around by the bar after the show. I'm, I'm persistent, it's all I've got, persistence. It's my, it's my superpower of dating, persistence. Try and wear them down. <laughs> Hopefully get a pity fuck. Uh, I mean, is there any other kind, mate? Uh, <laughs> do make sure we get a shot of that man. Because <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't just picking on someone randomly. Make sure it's funny because it's true. <laughs> I said... Uh, I said, come on, I know it hasn't gone very well tonight, but give me another chance. Let me take you out for dinner. She said, you take me out for dinner. I wouldn't piss on you if you were on fire. <laughs> I said, uh, what if I wasn't on fire? <laughs> Didn't seem to help. Uh, it, was, it was a gamble, but imagine if it had paid off, mate. Are you imagining that? It's good. Do you like that? Yeah? You like the idea of a woman pissing on me? Yeah? It's good to... <laughs> Again, on TV. So, um... <laughs> <laughs> tragic. So, uh, I think it's important to live your life by a motto. I think we all do. I remember, um, at school we used to play football in games lessons. I wasn't very good at football, but I was persistent. I was a trier. Uh, I was a very selfish player. I'd always hog the ball, which is a problem. I was a useless player. I'd always lose the ball. Uh, at the end of one lesson, Mr Morris, the games teacher, he came up to me, he said, Herring, you're playing very selfishly, you have to learn to pass the ball. Football is a team game, and there is no I in team. I said, no, but there is a me in there. Uh, <laughs> if you look closely, it's a bit jumbled up, isn't it? But it's definitely in there. And Mr Morris, who lives his life by the philosophy that if a word has a smaller word inside it, <laughs> that actually affects the definition <laughs> of the larger word, <laughs> was forced to concede that it was all right for me to play selfishly as there is a me in team. <laughs> lesson. I started tripping up people on my side, jumping on them, gnawing at their legs. Mr Morris said, what are you doing, Herring? That is against the rules of association football. I said, Mr Morris, there is an eat in team. <laughs> I said, fair enough, yeah, you got me there. Can't really argue with that. It would be hypocritical. <laughs> I've been hoist with my own petard. That's, that's what he said. He was a very Shakespearean quoting games teacher. Don't, don't stereotype the games teacher. They're not all ignorant bullies who sleep with sixth form girls. That is <laughs> an unfair stereotype. The next lesson, I started attacking people on my side with a cleaver. Then um, I took their lifeless cadavers. I hung them up in a refrigerated lorry for, <laughs> for sale at market at some later date. I was <laughs> hoping to make a profit from my evil deeds. <laughs> Mr. Morris was bamboozled. He couldn't understand what was going on. He said, what are you doing, Herring? That is murder. That is currently against the laws of the United Kingdom and is seriously frowned upon by the FA. <laughs> I said, Mr. Morris, there is a meat in team. And Mr. Morris said, no, Herring, meat is an anagram of team. I live my life by the philosophy that if a word has a smaller word inside it, <laughs> that affects the definition. Not if it's an anagram. What kind of ridiculous philosophy would that be? If the <laughs> anagram had any bearing on the definition of the word, it would be a ludicrous credo. 
to live one's life by. So I did have to go to prison for 30 years, because um, <laughs> it turns out meets an anagram. I've learned an important lesson in prison, the definition of what an anagram is. That was the lesson I learned. But don't let anyone tell you that prison doesn't work. It does work. There's a right-wing reactionary message to that routine. <laughs> So I don't, I don't think we really understood homosexuality at school, did we, when we were kids? I think we knew it existed. I don't think we really understood what it was. I think that's a shame if you've got kids, explain this stuff to them, otherwise they make up their own ideas. I think that's where homophobia begins, through ignorance. Uh, but, and there's nothing to be ashamed of. Talk to your kids about this stuff. But I think it's clear we didn't understand homosexuality as kids, from the sign we would use to indicate as kids that a man was gay. It was, it was generally that, wasn't it? That was, that was generally the sign indicative of homosexuality, which, which I would say shows a fairly basic misunderstanding <laughs> of the Homosexual Love Act. I think, uh, as kids, we must have imagined if two men fell in love, they'd go to a room somewhere, take off their clothes, stand facing opposite each other, approximately one foot apart, on average, and... <laughs> then just very gently bump the end of their erect penises together over and over again until achieving orgasm in maybe three or four months. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's weird, because we understood heterosexual sex as kids, didn't we? The sign we'd use to indicate heterosexual sex as kids. It was that, wasn't it? That is vaguely accurate from what I recall. It's been a, been a while, I have to say. I <laughs> haven't been drinking this year, so obviously I haven't had sex this year. I mean, imagine having sex sober. <laughs> this, in fact, this is pretty much the most sexually exciting thing that has happened to me thus far. <laughs> 2000, I'm quite getting off on that. I'm going to find it difficult to get past this bit of the act. <laughs> oh, it's okay, I've come. So, uh, I guess... <laughs> I guess if we'd understood homosexual sex, the correct sign we should have used as kids to indicate that a man was gay, surely it'd be more like, um... <laughs> don't be... Don't be... It's a beautiful expression of love between two... Don't be childish about it. <laughs> which, which, to be honest with you, Bloomsbury, that, that does make homosexuality look a lot more appealing than that, doesn't it? I mean, I think... <laughs> I think if we'd had the, more, the correct information, more of us would have wanted to give that a go. You know, I'd have been gay for a I thought it was that. If I'd known it was that, I'd have tried it out for a couple of days just to see how that panned out. A teacher should have come over and gone, that's not what they do, you fucking idiots. That's, <laughs> that's what they get up to. That's, that's it. That's what they do, the lucky bastards. That's, not just on their birthday, every day of the year. That's... <laughs> It's better than a floppy old vagina, and it? you get some, get some purchase on that kind of guess. <laughs> to be honest, um, I don't think we really understood lesbian sex either, because the, the sign would use as kids to indicate that a woman was gay. It was that, wasn't it? That was the. <laughs> the sign, which again, I think, shows a fairly basic misunderstanding of the lesbian love act. I think as kids, we must have imagined if two women fell in love, they'd go to a room somewhere, take off their clothes, go to opposite ends of the room, <laughs> then run at each other, <laughs> vagina first, <laughs> smashing their genitalia together, back and crashing their pudenda up, back and crunching their beef curtains back <laughs> to achieving orgasm or breaking their pelvis, whichever came first. I guess if we'd understood a lesbian sex, um, the correct sign we should have used uh, to indicate that a, a woman was gay. And, and if you see any kids doing this wrong, sir, do go up and correct them. You won't, you won't get into any kind of trouble. <laughs> the correct side, I think, would be more accurate to indicate a lesbian. It'd be this, wouldn't it, surely? is my understanding from the instructional videos I have seen. So, uh, <laughs> you know, there is a point, you know, when you realise that this is being filmed. I, you know, I'm... That's, that's gonna... That's for all posterity now, what I just did there. That's gonna... There's a point where I realise I'm 40 years old. It's essentially my job to stand on stage licking my own hand <laughs> whilst fondling my own imag semi-imaginary bosom. <laughs> I think my dad's proud of me. He's not. He's a shame. 40 years old, it's tragic, you know. I'm still a single man, I'm still kind of 
playing the field and it's kind of tra- I think it's a bit uh, tragic and I think you know some, pe- some people think it's good to be still single at 40 I think it's a bit tragic I think when you make about 18 or 19 you think it's a good idea to go out and sleep with loads of different people I think generally we get a bit older into our mid 20s we realise it's more satisfying to be in a long term exclusive relationship with someone we have genuine feelings for that we cherish and love then we get a bit older, uh, into our 30s. Uh, we realise, no, no, I was right first of all, but... Uh, <laughs> too late now, got kids, haven't you? Uh, you'd have to divide up the CD collection, more trouble than it's worth. <laughs> Best just sit it out, wait for the blessed release of death. Uh, <laughs> thanks very much for having me. See you again. Okay.